Hello everyone, welcome to Noble Creative Tutorials. Today we have a new motion graphics tutorial in our series and I will show you how to create a procedural kaleidoscope visualizer in Adobe After Effects without using any third-party plugins. So as you see here, my company have this rose curve using white on an expression to create it. And we covered that in the previous tutorial, how to graph polar and parametric equations using expressions. So make sure to watch it first so you can follow with me in this tutorial. So as you can see here, I have the same expression. Everything is the same, except we are going to add a few expressions to this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add a new null object and rename these to controller and just going to copy all these sliders and move them right here and just copy these and add it here on the position basically so nothing basically happened the idea why we are doing this because we have x and y on brush position and we want to add the Z. So we're going to make this a 3D here. And you can see here on this expression, we have X and Y, and we need to add the Z. So we have X and Y, we're going to add the Z expression here using time, multiply that by 50 at the time. So now you can see how these just change the value on the Z of the controller. And so here, we're just going to link these to the controller here and then pair it in the use two comp expression here, open bracket, and then zero comma zero zero. So here we have a three axis array, as you can see here. And basically now we got back our, our right or rose curve here. So you can see here now it's animating. You can see how the null is animating there. And basically you can see how it's different than how it was. We have that going on the Z position as well. So here, if we multiply these by zero, we're going to get back these on the same level as you can see here. Okay, so we're going to add a few sliders here. So this is going to be depth and we need time and here we're going to use P and we need Q as well. Okay, so here, let's just add depth equal this slider here. Let's put this to 10. And basically here, we're just going to multiply these by the depth here. So now we can control it. Okay, so we can multiply these by time again. So we can see what we got here. So for now, let's keep these at 10 and right here, we're going to do a few adjustments to the angle. So basically you can just keep it very simple like this. I multiply by time or basically using it like that. So here, why I'm going for this, because here we have two values that I want basically to control here. So this is going to be Q and this is going to be P. So we want to be able to change the values of these three variables at the same time randomly to just draw abstract shapes. And we're going to add P equal and Q equal here. So we're going to link these to the sliders. So let's give these 360 and this 180 here. Let's organize these just after the angle. Okay, so basically now we are going to add expression here using F. We want basically these to stop at specific time. We don't want that just to keep drawing uh, right here. So we're going to use F 
time is less than t, which is going to be our time here, so t equal time, and it's going to be on seconds, so let's say 10. And so here, we want to say, okay, if the angle, basically, if time is less than the t, 10 seconds, we want this, and also we want to move this c position right here. Else we want we want the angle to equal zero. So we can see here after ten second, you can see how the null just stops right there. We can make these at twenty if we want to. So now this is going to keep going, and then at 20, just going to stop. Actually, 20 here. So now we have full control over that, as you can see here, which is very nice. So, and now we have linked these together. So what we want to do actually now is to make the collider looking stuff. So here I have the audio, and basically we want that to react to the audio, obviously. So first, let's add Collider here. And you can see what's going on right now. We have center, so we can move that, and we have size and rotation, and all the cool stuff you can do here. So basically, let's reset these. And for this audio, we're going to convert audio to keyframe. So right here we have these channels. Let's add a new control effect here. And so the idea now is we want to link these channels to, to react with the collider. So here on these center here, uh, we're going to just rename the variable R equal and this is going to be the right channel here and then we're going to use is all linear expression so i'm going to use is to remap the values and basically we need to know what is the maximum and minimum of these audio here so here on these uh, we can see here on the graph we have the maximum of these around 25 and the minimum is around three. So we're going to keep that between three and 20. And then the new values we want is 900 and 950. And basically we want these to get into place. So we're going to rename these variable is r equal or name this is is r and is r here is going to be the x and is going to be the y value. So and now we can see how this is going to be reacting here to these bits. So basically let's preview and see how this looks like. Okay, so we can do the same thing here. Just copy these and add these to rotation. Or for the rotation, we want to go for both channels for different values here. So we're going to link these to both channels and to remap the values between minus 10 and 40 and between 0.2. So these the values of the audio, both channels, the minimum and maximum we want, the new values here for the rotation. So now we have added the rotation 
a subtle rotation value here. So you can just see these on the graph here, like where the rotations, they are going to be affected. So let's preview and see how this looks like. So basically now let's just make these look different. So size these 35 and you can change here the mirroring style to whatever you want. But the idea here, now we can go here to the controller and just change these maybe to eight. And we're going to get different look because the shape is going to look differently. So this is the shape without Collider and this with Collider. So here we want to add the value of the center so we can just be able to move these manually here. So we have the Collider and we can just move these dot wherever we want here. So you can see just changing that and it's going manually to be changing there for different values. We can do the same thing for the rotation, just add value here, and we can manually just add where we want to, something like that. And basically, we can add a camera here, and by zooming this, it's going to affect the look and also by panning these to the right or left so you can see so maybe here we need to move these to the right so you can see here what's going on so basically this without collider and because this is 3d uh, null have these uh, draw on space so if we go here for depth and put this to zero, so you can see the difference. So you can see this without depth and this with depth here. As you can see, moving that. So here, what I'm going to do is adding mirror effects and just mirroring these on the other side right there. It's half collide after, so when we move the center to the left, we can still get the look here. So without mirror, there is uh, nothing right there. So now we can have on other side as well, which is very useful. So as you see now, we have very complicated looking kaleidoscope here, which can be easily changing by any values here. So let's just change here the C value. If we look here at these expressions, so you can see we have the C value here uh, inside R, which is the equation, and you can see the look we are getting here. So we can make these even complicated here. We can duplicate these and for the first one let's just disable these and also just rotation for these as well so here maybe 1500 minus 50 and let's get these to 100 and make it stylish for example here so you can see what we got maybe this 90 here so basically now we have all affecting um, the center here so we want to add expression here so first the second duplicate we want to make sure the value affected by the second collider here 
So make sure to add to and a rotation. Same for it. And you can see how really beautiful looking we got here. So on the center here, let's just disable these. And so for the center here, we're going to add time and multiply that by 100. And we don't want a rotation here. So let's preview and see how this is going to be like zooming out or keep going uh, the center. It's going to keep animating there. So let's see how this looks like. Okay, that's pretty cool. We can basically just duplicate these and change it to different color here. So maybe a red and just change here. Brush spacing and make sure on original image, the first one needs to be on transparent. So now we got both. Let's change the size of the brush to eight. So we can see what's going on here. We have both right now. And basically we can duplicate the second one. And maybe I'm just going to leave the right on first one, change different color. And right here on the second one, maybe we can keep the rotation for this. And let's make sure it's on transparent so let's just multiply these by four different spacing here maybe by two again so let's pretty just see how this looks like Okay, that's look pretty cool. So let's add some post effect to this to make it look better. So let's create a new adjustment layer and rename these effects and add glow and we're going to duplicate this one. Let's go for three short, 70 and one head on the radius, something like that. And we can add sharpen and going for 10, adding noise with this going five and I'm going to add colorama here and let's go to modify antic modify alpha and let's go for hue and saturation and here you can choose whatever preset you want and compose it over layer let's antic that maybe here we're just going for 0.5 and for this one here, maybe a little bit spacing and brush hardness, maybe putting that to 20. So it depends on what look you're looking for. Let's add here camera lens blur and add a quick mask right here. So basically I want to use this mask only on camera lens blur here. So let's reverse that, hit MM and just feather that a little bit right there. And basically, it's just put these right there. So maybe I'm going for a different color here. Maybe this one, just keep it like that. And let's just tweak a little bit the camera here maybe 10, just crank up here, 
things and maybe just just 50 here and yeah, let's preview to see how this looks like Okay, that's look fine. So, and now we can add to the second one, CC Radio Fast Blur. And by adding that, you can see uh, it's got a nice effect right there. So we can change these to brightest and you can see it even more here. And we can also use this length to the audio. So let's link these to both channels here and using ease to remap the values here. And so we want that between zero and maximum 25. And we want to add the value manually if we need to. So here, let's set these for now to zero and this is going to respect the maximum and minimum value. So you can see we don't have that effect the whole time. So maybe for the effects, can change the preset to something just back here. And we want to get that different looking there. So here we need to adjust these. So we got a nice look in here. And for this one, Basically, we can just get right off the red and duplicate that on the next one and keep the red and just get right off the white here. And it needs to be on transparent. So basically for the second one or the third one here, uh, maybe we just need to keep or change here the value of these time, maybe this time 150. So we can see that so many things moving at the same time. Right there we can add the same radial for it as well by changing these input values here. So maybe 5 and maybe 10 and 50 here and change these to 5. So let's just solo these so we can see which one we're affecting there. This is with the second one here. So the white one I think we need to get a little bit of space in here so it's not too dense. And also we can go to controller and stop these maybe at 10. Something like that. Let's see how this looks like now. And let's preview and see how it looks. So as you see, this look pretty cool. And so now you can do all the changes you want. For example, we can go back here for five, just changing the C value here. And we're going to get in different uh, looks and shapes here, as you can see, without changing anything. So you can see here what we got this time. Very cool looking animations here. Very nice. and. Of course, we can just add a new adjustment layer here, and this is going to be Master Collider, for example. And here we can uh, just apply Collider again, and basically you can see we are getting so many uh, nice stuff here. So we can just keep going really. Uh, infinite result you can duplicate that 
and there you go we got so many things to do here with this as you can see here and and now I'm going to show you so many other different tips and tricks for example here um, you can see how this looks and right here I got turbulence so basically right here if I turn off this turbulence here you can see how it changed the look so basically let's just preview this first so basically right here if we turn off turbulence displays and if we change here displacement you can see how it affects the look as you can see here very interesting just by changing here the displacements you can see what's going on here and also moving these offset turbulence getting more complicated looks or evolution whatever here so the idea here basically is adding a mask on these so here i have a mask and if we take a look at this mask you can see this point is actually animating and that is uh following the animation of the audio there so what it is basically is create the mask on the same layer and then use the scripts after effects scripts create nulls from path so basically the points follow the nulls as you see here so basically this one is linked to the audio and just multiply that by a value so uh, basically the position plus these uh, audio here so both channels multiply that by 50 so now it's animating right here and on here we just apply that to the collider here or to the turbulence actually so here we use this mask only on that so let's turn off collider here and so we can see what's going on so the turbulence affects only parts of these um these shapes so you can see here it's affect this part and as it's moving so now it affects more of it so we can just do all the stuff right there and basically on collider it's just create that cool looking as you see here so just by changing here the displacement you can see now affecting that which is very cool changing the look very quickly and easily using this technique and also we can use transform here and audio reaction is linked to scale so you can see here a difference and you can see how scale value changing here uh, basically the idea here if we just turn off these collider here let's just keep the transform you can see how these actually affecting the scale or the size of these shape and using that with a kaleidoscope and without turbulence here it's going just to give us this look here so if we use turbulence displace uh, it's going to give us this look and if you want to keep just uh, the scaling uh, property there you need to use a solid composite before kaleidoscope and it's going to fix the problem just make sure the opacity is set to zero and there you go you can just uh, combine that with uh, turbulence and it's still going to have the effects that you want to have so many things you can do with these actually and another uh, tip here I want to show you is this example as you can see here very nice so let's first preview this
So basically to get this look, all you need to do is make sure that the brush spacing is set to the minimum and then you're going to get this line look in here and then you can start building up these on a different layers and to get different looks, just playing here with the Collider Center and uh, mirroring styles and everything now is linked to the audio controller so we don't need basically to go into uh, these expressions and start remapping so we can just create a null and link that all and so let's say you want to uh, just get another or different music all you need to do basically is just replace your music here and delete the audio amplitude and then you can just generate a new one and it's going to be linked automatically there so and now you can just uh, input these values here depend on the minimum and maximum of your uh, audio so let's just preview and see how this looks like So as you see now, we have a new audio and it just reacts to all of these very nicely. So you can adjust if you need to all these audio control stuff, inputs if you need to. And another tip I want to show you here is on these controller here, you can also link the expression here to the audio with these P and Q as well or else with any value that you want, C or E, depend on the expression value you have there. And you can see here, we're going to get a different look. So just if we enable these uh, value here to be animating as well, you can also change the angle reacting to the audio values, which is going to give us all these. So let's just C with P and Q, which is actually right here in these uh, control controller here. So for this, we have this P and Q that it's going to be animating. So let's take a look at these and see how it looks like. So as you see now with these two variables enabled here, so you can see how it just affects the look as well. Okay, so another tip I want to show you here, which is very important, is these one right here. So here basically um, on these position here, which we have these expression, you can just use any um, any equation. So here we use the curve. We can go for um, maybe this one here. Let's just disable these and see what we are going to get. So you can see here by changing that we got a different look, and you can just manipulate that. So depend on the actual equation you are using, which is very important to get a really nice element shapes right there. So that's it guys, hope you find this tutorial very useful for you as always. And if you have any questions, just comment and I will do my best to be responsive. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials coming soon and thank you for watching.